How you doing? Everybody's good tonight? Hi. You sitting already? <laughs> this is, I, okay, I gotta, I gotta say some, a couple of hellos. Let's just do this right away. Balcony, how you guys doing up there? Everybody's good? Are you gonna be good tonight? Are you gonna be the best? Are you gonna bring it out of yourself? I want you to bring the best out of yourself. I want to put it in your hand. Throw it right down to me. Just throw that energy. Are you good? Yeah? I don't know. I don't know, Balcony. I don't know if I'm feeling it quite yet. I feel it down here. Everybody here was... Let's do this. Let's do this. This would be a good... This would be a test of it. Let's do this. Balcony, if you're really, really in the mood, if you're really ready to go tonight, like you say you are, do this. Ready? Jump. <laughs> <laughs> are we feel I mean, we're feeling this tonight, right? You feel it? Isn't that the best feeling when you just fucking feel it? Anything that you do, you just it doesn't matter. Laundry day. I'm feeling it. I'm gonna have a great load today. I'm gonna find some cash in jeans. I'm feeling it. Do you want to know what we're going to do tonight? Do you want to know what's going to happen in here tonight? Saying, Dane, give us a little bit of a, uh, a cheat sheet, Dane. Give us a little, a little heads up. Tell us about your little bullet points, Dane. What are we going to be discussing tonight? <laughs> give us a little heads up, Dane. Well, fuck it. Yes, I'll tell you. We're going to cover quite a bit of things. We're going to talk about relationships. I'm sure there's many relationships in here tonight. Yeah, hang it over. You know what we're going to do? You know what we're going to do tonight? We're going to destroy those relationships. Yep. <laughs> Over. I'm telling you right now, the material that I'll be covering tonight is going to make you look at the person next to you and go, yeah, why the fuck are we doing this? We are too lazy to break up. That's our problem. So tonight, I'm going to help kick that into high gear. So... <laughs> Some of these relationships will be completely destroyed. I would even say, if I had to think of a percentage, I would say 60% of all couples that came here tonight, you will be leaving separately. <laughs> I, lo I love the couples who are excited. That could be us. We might be... <laughs> it's gonna be awkward though on that flight, you bought tickets together, you gotta sit next to each other. Hi. How was the rest of your trip? <laughs> I got laid a lot. <laughs> We're going to talk about a couple of things before we get into the nitty gritty about that. I want to uh, just, I want to point out something about, uh, about you, okay? About you guys here tonight. Society stuff, but we'll talk about it with you guys. You'll be here to represent the people out there. When you leave, just fucking pass it along. <laughs> things that you pick up. Everybody, okay, everybody is a little bit racist. No, no, no. Everybody's a little bit racist when you're hungry. <laughs> you may not even know this about yourself, but when you get a little bit hungry, you get a little bit racist. <laughs> let's give you an example. Let's put you in a line. Let's say that line is not moving. You just want to place your order. You just want to get up to the front, place that order. Your stomach's kind of gurgling a little bit. It's always frustrating when the line is not moving. You don't know what's going on up there, so you kind of do that thing where you're like... realize that you're about to get a little bit racist because you're standing there and you're wondering and then when your friends finally comes up while you're looking taps you on the shoulder and goes hey what's going on you turn this fucking black dude's taking forever <laughs> one kick off his beats by Dre he's just bopping around up there he's not ordering break dancing or some shit that's right clap because that's you Let's take it a step further since you're saying, Dean, you're on to me. You're vibing me, DC. Okay, let's crank it up a notch. I'll take it a step further. When you're very hungry, when you're really starving, everybody gets a little anti-religion. Yep, a little hungry, a little racist. Very hungry, anti-religion. You're saying, Dane, maybe a demonstration? That's why I'm fucking here. Watch.
Let's do this. Let's put you in the same line, the line, the line you were in before. Let's put you in that same line, and let's say that line now isn't moving for how long? S six minutes, okay? That's an insane amount of time to wait for anything. It's insane. Nobody should be waiting six minutes. Even, even a funeral should be like five minutes tops. You don't have to lower the coffin slowly. Drop that shit in the ground. No one's getting hurt. Come on, I gotta go. There's other stuff I have to go do that I want to get away from to go do something else that I gotta get away from. So let's say you're in that line. Now you're starving, okay? Your stomach is really, you don't even know you're about to get anti-religion. Your stomach's really now, it's like churning. And you don't know why the line isn't. Jesus up the ass. Yeah, laugh. That's you. Laugh at you. Laugh at blasphemy. <laughs> I'm actually glad you laughed at that because I'm always a little bit nervous that someday I'm going to pass away. I go to heaven. I'm going to get there. The Lord's going to be waiting for me at the gate like this. Fuck me in the ass, huh? All right, me first. I come lightning. <laughs> women, I've learned something about you. I peeked behind the curtain of women, and I saw something. This is so wild, so simple, but true. Right here, get ready. Women hate the word moist. <laughs> Hate it. Moist. Just say it. Just turn to a girl right now and just say, moist. Look, don't say it. Say what he said to say. How did, how did I discover this? I'm doing sh a show several months ago, and I, I was describing a piece of cake that I'd eaten. The cake was both moist and delicious. And when I said that word, I saw a girl over on this side of the room. She kind of... And I saw this happening, this little seizure thing happening. And I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, do you have a, a particular problem with that food item, the cake that I'm describing? She goes, mm -hmm. and I was like, what's going on over here? I don't really understand. Then I go, is it, is it the word moist? And the second I said it, she put her hand up at me. She went like this, and then she goes, she goes, enough. She detested the word. And then the girls around her are like, yeah, mm. But I don't understand. So I ask her, I go, really, what is it about the word moist that you, that you detest, that's so wretched, that makes you writhe in your seat? And the, the answer was so simple but true. She goes, it's the oist. <laughs> Let that be a lesson, guys. It's the oist. I would also recommend don't ask your girl to hoist something if you're lifting up. I'm assuming that's also going to just say, let's lift this shit. Nobody's hoisting. I stopped, uh, recently I stopped playing uh, video games. I put them aside for a little bit, and I'll, t I'll tell you why as soon as these fucking people stop clapping. Uh, Jesus Christ. Know when to clap. <laughs> no comedy show needs a smattering of applause. Save that for golf. Let's mm. get a point, and I want to let him know that I understand. Why did I put them away? It's quite simple. I actually believe that the games are getting too violent. I know, it's crazy. I'm a gamer. I'm a lifelong gamer. Hold on, don't boo yet. Don't boo till you hear my entire idea, and then we'll take a moment and I'll come back to you. And we'll see if you still want to hold on to that boo. That's the way we're going to do it. After I'm done with this entire routine, I'm going to point at you. And if you want to boo again, then you got your boo. But if there's three moments of silence, I know that's your way of saying, you know what, Dane? I recant my boo. I think that games are now, they're getting too violent. I actually think that they're getting to a point now, the graphics are so enhanced and the sound effects are so life. Okay, here's what happened. I had an epiphany moment. I was playing a game 
and in the middle of this game, I shot a little boy reading a book. He wasn't even part of the mission, that's the other thing. He wasn't even... He was just an ancillary character drawn in on the sidelines. I had to leave the mission, walk over to the library stairs, crouch. I teabagged, if I may. And then after a couple of seconds, I shot him right in the book. And it really just struck me in that moment of how violent these games have become. And the thing is, I was playing Madden. <laughs> the Aaron Hernandez edition. These games. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I know, funny shit, right? That's why I brought it to you. That's the whole point of tonight. Look, we're gonna connect, we're gonna bond, we're gonna reveal, we're gonna learn some things, we're gonna eviscerate some relationships. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Something I, I realized in my travels recently that, uh, guys, if you're gonna take your girl for an abortion, <laughs> relax, I got this. I got it. This is an open mic. I know what I'm doing up here. <laughs> if you're going to take your girl for an abortion, I realized I would not recommend taking her to dinner that night for baby back ribs. <laughs> See, the baby's not coming back, so... That particular menu item is going to incite some very recent sadness. And then imagine this, what if she orders the baby back ribs, they're not cooked properly, then your girl has to send back her baby back ribs. <laughs> Two babies going back, same day. <laughs> Let's add a third tier, new waiter, he's a little trepidatious, he got the order wrong, doesn't know the jargon of the restaurant, he comes up, he's like, do you want to just abort that order and order something else? <laughs> I would like to, wow. Is that what you said? Wow. Did I shine some truth on you, ma'am? Is that what it was? I held a mirror up to you. I have to cancel your abortion appointment for this week. No abortion for you. Wow. That was the weirdest, right? Wow. You're the kind of person like you see in an incredible film and at the very end the credits are like super <laughs> entertaining jeez <laughs> okay i want to just talk to the the women the girls ladies females chicks whatever the fuck you call yourself uh, there's a moment, okay, there's a moment in your relationship that you, this is a moment that you adore. This might be one of your favorite moments in a relationship. I think this might be one of the moments that when you think about it, it's, 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 it fills you up, okay? It's one of those moments that you look at and you go, that was such an incredible feeling that my, my man gave to me. And I'm here to let you know tonight that this moment is not what you think it is. <laughs> in fact, it is pretty much the opposite of what you think it is. And you're not going to like what I have to say. You're going to email me later, you're going to say, fuck. You, Dane Cook. <laughs> and I can take it because I know that what I say is going to resonate, and after a few days, you're going to say, I know, I have to write him again. Thank you, Dane Cook. <laughs> Here's the moment. I need you to help me out. This is what I need you to do. I need you to picture you and your guy together. Do this for me. Picture uh, outdoor mall. Picture yourself in a very busy outdoor mall. Just somewhere there's a sea of people coming and going. If you can't think of an outdoor mall, I don't know, go with maybe Farmer's Market. That's, you know, that'll be good. Farmer's Market. If you can't think of that, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I just need you to think of something because I gotta go. I don't care. Egypt at this point. Just let's get a crowd around you in your brain. And this is the moment. So you're with your guy and you're hanging out and then there's just all these people coming in and going. And then there's a moment of insecurity that starts to happen in you. 
girls, a little bit of insecurity because you look at your guy and then you look around at like other options. It becomes options, other women walking around, and especially during summertime months, you know, girls are kind of scantily clad and there's flesh exposed. Girls, you wear a, it's a skirt, but it's really just like a, you know, it's, it's like a, it's, it's a belt that you just pulled there, basically. It's not even a, it's not a skirt. It's a belt and then they a chip clip over your badge and that's the whole outfit. Yeah. That's it. Thanks, Miley. So you're looking at these potential options and that weird little voice starts to rise up and you're looking at these, oh, look at her, she looks so professional. She looks like she has a bright future. And look at her, she's so tall and glamorous. That girl's got a camera, she has hobbies. I don't have a hobby. And it's this horrible thing that you start doing where you're questioning who you are to your guy. And that's when the wonderful moment happens. Suddenly, as you're, as you're kind of internally tearing yourself down, your guy will put his arm around you, pull you in close. Yeah. And if in that moment you don't just... <laughs> just fills you up. Even if your guy is shorter than you, somehow you look up. You know? <laughs> Because I believe in that moment, what you feel is that symbolically, what your, what your man has done when he put his arm around you like that, is he's saying to everybody, that whole cornucopia of human beings, all these girls, he's saying, hey, ladies, this, this is my woman. I'm her man. It's about us, we. Nothing is going to come between her and I. And I'm here to tell you tonight, that's not why we put our arm around you. We put our arm around you because we're fucking steering you. <laughs> when we let you walk by yourself, you turn into a salmon trying to swim upstream. Oh, baby, baby, wait for me, babe. You get circumvented into a sunglass hut somehow. Baby, come back for me! I gotta come fish you out of the Mac store because you walk like a moron. Just stay on my six. Of course you're laughing. This is you. <laughs> Before we talk to the guys, I'm just gonna go straight down the middle about something here because he's saying, Dane, wait a second. Are we gonna talk about a relationships? I'm not in a relationship. I'm sure there's a lot of single people here tonight at the show, right? Yeah. And that's really sad. That's, that's really pathetic. You couldn't find somebody to come to a great show with that, you know, is, you've damaged goods. <laughs> but maybe the problem is the places that you're looking. I think it's the places that you're looking because now in this day and age, you can find exactly what you want in a person. Okay? You can find all of the things that you desire, and that place is called the internet. Internet, you can find everything. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, the things that, you know, it used to be so different. You know, you'd have to like meet somebody at a bar, you'd have to dress in a way that wasn't really quite you, because it's almost like an audition for love. So you have to, <laughs> and then uh, you have to, you know, kind of act and behave in a way that's not really quite you. So you would have to say things, like, you're not saying this, but you have to say things like, hi, I'm appropriate, I'm appropriate, nice to see you. <laughs> I've got irons in the fire. I've got, I'm not a psycho. Pupils not dilated. Check me out. All right. It's like it's like a it's like a, a job interview for a relationship. And you can't really be your true self in that moment. You're really the furthest thing. Sometimes you have to wait years before you can reveal the things that you really want. You know? Sometimes you have to wait years before you can tell a person like sexually the things that you really crave. You know? You can look at the person that you're with when they're like, "What do you want to do?" Oh, you know what I really want to do. <sighs> I want to fuck a beehive. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid. I don't know why. I always dreamed about it. I didn't even care if there's bees in it. It's just, <laughs> it's just my thing. Can we do it? Can we go get a beehive? Can we do that together? I'm not saying I want to do it all the time. I did one time shot. Right? You'd have to wait years to reveal that. Now, with the internet, internet, you can put that right in your about me section. 
Name, I want to fuck a beehive. That's it. You leave, come back 20 minutes later, four messages in your inbox. One of them is like, hey, give me a buzz sometime, honey. You can find anything that you want so specific to your desires. You can actually, you can find, if you're religious, you can go to religious, you can go to, if you're Christian, go to christianmingle.com. Yeah, you can go to, I'm not Christian, I, but I joined it, you know? Just to see what the razzmatazz was like in there. I'm joined, if you want to send me a message on there, my screen name is uh, Satan's Asshole. So give me a shot. <laughs> yeah, Dane Cook was taken. That was just what was recommended, so I went with what. <laughs> you can go in there and you can mingle with other Christians. Talk about, you know, Christian shit. <laughs> you know, I'm not Christian, but you know, I'm sure that they were in there talking about, uh, you know, guilt. Testaments, <laughs> you know, where the ark really is. I don't know what the <laughs> sins that are really true sins and the ones that you mean get away, you know, with. <laughs> if you're Jewish, you can go on uh, J Date, you know, and meet other people of Jewish descent, talk about Jewish things. I'm not Jewish, but I'm sure it's a blast in there. I'm sure they're all in there talking about dreidels and Yiddish words and <laughs> new yarmulke styles and. What I'm trying to say is there's some site for every, if you're a farmer, you can go and there's a site to meet other farmers. It doesn't matter, pick any, if you're, if you're Indian, that website is just .com. I know, funny. That's why I brought it. Girls who are on your Twitter. I want to say something right now. Okay, listen. With the a couple of things with the Twitter that bothered me. First of all, I wish they would make the little profile pictures bigger when they're in the stream, because sometimes your eye plays tricks on you and you think you're seeing something or somebody that you're not. Right, guys? That thing happens sometimes. You're like, ooh, that's a hot chick sitting on a dirt bike holding her tit. <laughs> then you open it, old man fixing a transistor radio. Huh? You know, girls, when you write that little description of yourself, this is where I, please go, go home tonight and delete it. <laughs> because it's not good. I think that you think you're being very clever in there, but it's really, it's cringeworthy. And it's, go, I challenge anybody, go home tonight, try to read any girl's little about me section out loud without, yeah. <laughs> you can't, pick a random girl's page, just try to read it out loud. Just, just a small town girl living in a snow globe of life. Let's shake things up. <laughs> I like French fries and French guys. Rolf! <laughs> Rolf Mao! <laughs> Isn't it so fun to hate on shit online? Isn't that fun? You like to hate stuff. That's what people do online. It's the hater net. And people go in there and they just post things anonymously, you know? You, that's you. You're doing that shit. You know, you set up your, you get your regular page, that's your, you know, whatever your name, and then you've got your secret page. <laughs> where you can go in and just, <laughs> you, know, put, you know, there's no profile picture on that page, it's just, it's just you know, it's just like an egg. And that's where people, you know, you read the comments online, it's always from an anonymous, Justin Bieber's making poor decisions. <laughs> Mila Kunis is getting fat. I have one of these pages, I do it. Yeah, I log in once in a while, I got my regular Dane Cook page, you can go up on there and you can read about whatever I'm doing, you know, fucking buy, buy some merchandise, you know, a little hoodie, they're great, they feel great. Made in America. <laughs> but then I got my other page, and for that, that, I, okay, I'll tell you, I got two, because I have to tell the name of this one for you guys, but I have my Dinko page, and then I have my hater page, and that, that one I log in, and that name is Soul Crusher 11. <laughs> Let's just put that into some perspective. That means that 10 people. <laughs> before me 
had the idea to crush souls. <laughs> but I fucked up. Here's where, <laughs> here's where I screwed up. So I, one day I had a bunch of browser windows open. I was getting some work done. And then it was, uh, I, it was throwback Thursday. So I was going to put a picture of me rollerblading, wearing short shorts, eating a huge banana. <laughs> you know, throwback Thursday, fun stuff. And <laughs> I uploaded it, and then I realized immediately I uploaded it to my Soul Crusher 11 page. <laughs> Posted it on. So I had to quickly log in to my Soul Crusher 11, and I had to type some shit up, and I, I put like, Dane Cook just hacked my shit. <laughs> and to corroborate that story, I logged in under my own page, and I was like, I must admit, I just hacked Soul Crusher 11, and I posted pictures. <laughs> just a smooth. Talk to the guys, I want to talk to the fellows for a second, the men, the boys in the crowd. How you guys doing? Good. What the fuck ever, you know? I want to help you right now. I want to help you in your relationship. I want to help you to end it, you know, clean. But here's a couple of things that you need to know right away in the interim, okay, that you need to realize. Number one, guys, you'll never, you're never, ever going to win a text argument with a girl. It's never going to happen. They will always win 100% of the time. So I want you to just give up on it now. Don't even get involved in it. A couple of reasons why. First of all, girls type fucking fast. <laughs> right? We're two sentences in. I was not late yesterday. And then you see the three dots come up. <laughs> the three dots of I'm not finished appear. She already had her turn, but the dots. <laughs> so now you're under the gun. You're going to get yours out fast. And of course, that's when autocorrect changes the word yesterday to like Neanderthal, a word that has nothing to do with yesterday. Nothing. Yester years, potentially. You're four sentences in, and then she sends like, <laughs> she sends a manifesto. Right? So much information comes through your phone, your, your phone gets hot and drops to 54% battery life immediately from a full fucking charge. Why? Because the Constitution of Megan just came through. <laughs> and you can't even enjoy your reply because she has sent so much information that you, that you have to use like legal document terms for our rebuttal. <laughs> right? We gotta be like, in conjunction with section three, area five of the third scroll, you're a bitch. <laughs> But it changes bitch to batch. But you're so scared to stop typing, you leave it. You're a batch. That's what you are. You're like a bunch of stuff thrown together, strewn about. You just, you add of bitches. You're a batch of bitches. That's what you are. You're like seven bitches in a bundle. Have you had this happen? This might be one of, you're in, okay, you're in a text argument. You know a text argument goes back and forth, right? It's just passive aggressive. It's those little weird barbs. There's no real tone because it's text, so everything kind of sounds like really, really, oh really, 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 really? Is that what I do? Really, oh really, oh really, 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 really? It's just, and that's it, back and forth. And then something, whatever it is, something finally, you'll read it, and this moment happens where you, you read it, and then you're like, you know what? I'm tired of being text down to. <laughs> I'm deserved this kind of attitude with no text explanation whatsoever as to. <laughs> and then you start typing something hardcore, something that you know is gonna hurt. Right? And you know. Here's how you know how what you're writing is really bad. You, you can't even send that text. As you're typing it, you know. You're so nervous typing it that whenever you have to hit L, which is near send, you, you slow down. Right? You finish typing. You can't send that text right away. Right? You write it out, and then you have to do that shit where you were like...
afraid if you're with somebody, you're gonna be like, hey, do me a favor, pretend this is about you, read this, let me know how it makes you feel. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you read it again and you're like, you're not gonna send this text. No, you're not gonna send it, you won't send it. You do send it. <laughs> you don't wanna send it, why do you send it? The three dots come up, you're like, fuck it, send. <laughs> Whatever's in the chamber, go, you're out. You made me hit you because you're not patient, it's my turn. What is the confirmation that the text you should not have said? Here's the confirmation here. That text never sends right away. Every other text, you hit send and it goes whoosh, It's gone. Now this text, you hit send and the send bar does that shit where it's like... It's like fighting itself, right? It's like the universe knows what's up. The universe is involved. What do you want to do? Do you want to smash me on the ground right now? Come on, I'll give you a second. Dip me in a bucket of water, put me in a bag of rice later, I'll fix myself. <laughs> when it finally does send, even your phone knows what you sent is wrong. Even your phone, even like whatever that nice little chime is, not when that text goes out, even your chime knows. It's like, Ugh. <laughs> oh shit. And then it's gone, right? And then it's finally gone. And what do you do? You read it again. <laughs> Could have proofread it 14 times. Nope, once it's gone, then you read it the 15th time, and that is when you're like, I'm gonna get sued. This is, <laughs> I use the word murder and super murder in the same sentence. No grammar, no punctuation whatsoever. This is atrocious. <laughs> and you have to wait, now you have to wait for the reply. Right? Oh, I can't believe what I sent. I can't believe you gotta wait. You're nervous. You're just looking at your phone, walking around. You're just not yourself. You're in a department store. You're not shopping. You're just leaning against it. <laughs> what are they gonna say? <laughs> and then sometimes the dots come up while you're looking at your phone. You're just, it'll, you're just staring at the thing you sent, and then you see the dots, and you all, you, you just have to do this thing where you like crouch for some reason. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I'm gonna buy something. Uh, just give me a second, please. I'm just. <laughs> Just waiting for a really scary text. <laughs> you see the three dots and you're waiting. You're like, oh my God, I know what I wrote. What the fuck are they gonna say? <laughs> you're nervous, staring at those dots. You're nervous, you're waiting. Then you get like boxer mode. Now you start getting a little cocky, right? You're like, all right, all right here we go. <clears throat> what you gonna say? What can you say? And you're waiting, now you're getting really worked up, and then this happens. One of the worst feelings. The three dots disappear and nothing comes through. <laughs> Don't you just want to snap and call the person, what the fuck were you gonna write? <laughs> I saw dots! <laughs> yes, a bucket of ellipses was on my phone for several minutes. I was crouched in a store waiting. <laughs> you are a batch of bitches, what were you gonna say? Many bitches in a bundle, that's you. <laughs> Girls, you love your, uh, you love your little emojis. Oh my goodness, and, and please, you can, you can stop with those at any time. It's, Love you. you ever try to read girl text to each other that they send? You can't. You can't. It's all emoji. It's like Egyptian hieroglyphics. You can't decipher it. Nobody knows. O only the Illuminati knows what the fuck girls are sending back and forth to each other. <laughs> Fans of the Illuminati, I see. I, <laughs> I don't even know what most of them are. Several of the emojis, this bothers me too. Many of them are very, very tiny. You need to wear like a jeweler's eye. <laughs> oh, that's, a, that's a frog with a broken leg. Uh, oh, and his friend signed his cast. Get hoppin' hoppy. That's adorable. I don't know what this means in my life. There's several like that. There's only a couple of emojis that I really understand, and then the rest don't. I don't know who's using them. A couple, the couple, like the big yellow face. That makes sense. Big smiley. Right? You want to go to the movies? Yeah! 
that makes sense. On the one with the blushing, shy cheeks. I have my period. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> Feels like there's a javelin in my vagina. I just want to eat salt on salt. Salt on salt crime. <laughs> Those are the only two I, I really understand. The rest, is anybody here using the emoji wearing a surgical mask ever? Who is that for? Is that in case you have to quarantine a small city suddenly after an outbreak? Of, where's the hazmat emoji? I need to... The flag of Finland is in there. Anybody using the flag of fucking Finland? Hey guys, guess where I am? Finland! Someone had a Groupon, two days, one night. See you bitches yesterday. Finland! Yeah, there's a needle with blood in, just, in the air. You should never be in a situation where that emoji describes... First of all, that is very unsanitary. You do realize that. Just blood's coming out. Where are you that you're, hey, I'm at a party, you guys are here to come by. They just handed out syringes. We're just squirting our blood all over the place. Come on by, daywalkers. This is a... <laughs> and they just get weirder and weirder. Someday just do this. Someday just keep swiping. Just keep going. Just go to the end of the page of emojis. Just go past, you know, just go past the botanical garden of the 40 different flower variations that they've... Go past the skyscraper, you know. <laughs> By the way, I know this looks like I'm diddling my girlfriend in seventh grade. I just, I just, I just I'm looking. <laughs> Where? She's on the second bunk, evidently. She's very parallel to my face. Your arm falls asleep. The last page of emojis are just, they're just weird. It's like twin Japanese siblings just holding hands. <laughs> Who's using that? Oh my God, I'm on the bus. There's the weirdest Japanese twins. They're standing while the bus is in motion. They're the exact same height. They both have swords. Wait, now they're both dancing like this. I know, what your I know what your favorite emoji is. I know the one that you use every day. It's your favorite one, girls. You love the, uh, the poop emoji. Yeah, you love it. Use it every day. You've seen it, right? It's like a little, it's like a little whip. A parfait of shit -ten. You use it every day. Coffee cup, coffee cup, coffee cup, equal poop, poop, poop. I know. We all know your shit. Why did they give it eyes? Does that bother anybody else? That bothers me. I find that very disconcerting that they gave a tiny little pile of poo little peepers. Whose decision was that? Was it like a meeting at the emoji company? Everybody was in a conference room. Uh, uh, everybody, uh, good to see you. Good morning. We're very, very excited uh, about our new line of emojis. We think the general populace is going to really uh, enjoy these. We're gonna put a couple up on the projector, maybe do a couple of last minute details. If we could just click the next one. Ah, yes, uh, here we have the defecation emoji. And this is, who, by the way, who, Wilcox, stand up. This is wonderful. The artistry here is fantastic, Wilcox. You really nailed it. This is the kind of crap somebody would take if they were using a hula hoop and shooting on dry land. Boom. Crapping on a sidewalk, you got it, Wilcox. But it lacks soul, give it some eyes. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll take it back right now. If one person here can honestly tell me you've ever taken a crap, stood up, looked into the toilet, because you're always a look. <laughs> Nobody here has ever not looked. Nobody has ever taken a crap, stood up, wiped, tossed over the shoulder, <laughs> and trusted things were all right. You look. You look. You have to look, because when you look, it makes you feel like an artist. You're like, I created this. This looks like a swan silhouette. I did this. You always look before you jettison it off into the abyss. I don't think any, um, I don't think anybody should be sending pictures of their... <laughs> really? Already? 
I don't think that that's, you know, don't, you shouldn't be sending pictures via text of your, uh, you know, girls, don't send a close-up of your pussy. That's not sexy. <laughs> a close-up of your pussy is the least sexy. Pussy what you like, but I'm just telling you, this is my opinion. And I'm not going to be a hypocrite because I sent girls pictures of my cock. Every girl got the same picture, by the way. Four and a half years, everybody got the same shot. It was a beautiful picture. I couldn't talk. I'm not even kidding you. Just the composition was right that day. Everything was just, it really dazzled. The shadow just on the side, it looked very regal, if I can say that. And then, then I ran it through Camera Plus. I put a magic hour filter on it. That gave it some real sparkle. And then, then I'd send it to girls. I don't even think they would honestly get turned on by this picture of my... Penis, I think they would look at it and they would say, this belongs in a gallery. <laughs> but girls, I, I, I'll tell you, it's not sexy because it's, it's what you don't show a guy that gets us crazy. It's not when you show us everything, it's when you show us very little that, that just gets into our If you send a picture of just like ear to ear, it's just like bottom lip to the crust of a boob coming out of a towel, that makes us mental. Right? We get that picture and we just immediately kind of hunch, right? We back out of wherever we're at. We're, we're, what is, where's, where's the rest of her? I need to, what is this about? But any guy here will testify, you get a close-up of a vagina, we all do the same thing. We get it, we look at it for a couple of seconds, and then we start to question it. We're like, wait a minute, is this a terrain map of Afghanistan? What is this? Hold on. Is this one of those dipper sandwiches? What am I looking at here? What? Is this a Sarlacc pit from Return of the Jedi? Where's Boba Fett? I want to know. Because let's be honest, there's two kinds of vaginas. There's one, you can send this one. If, if everything's kind of nice and tucked up in there, it's almost welded shut, like, right? Looks like a dolphin smile. It's like. You can send that one. Don't send the other version. If it looks like you put a firecracker in there and <laughs> just kind of blammed everything out, uh-uh, me no lie. Uh-uh. It should never look like your hoo-ha jumped to its death off a 20-story building and landed on you. How many girls are going to go home tonight, go right into the bathroom, close that door, get in front of the mirror? <laughs> Baby, can you come in here for a second? Baby, is my pussy janky? call your own pussy janky, by the way. Just not even, don't even, even if you're kidding, we'll never let you live that down. Come to breakfast the next morning. Hey, janky clit, how you doing over there? Goosey, goosey. <laughs> Saying, Dane, what are some of the things that we can do early on in the relationship to build a solid foundation? Well, you fucking... <laughs> Simple. You gotta. What's that? What'd you say? Don't ruin it. Don't ruin what? First of all, fucking speak louder. Do you just slip yourself a roofie? I'm talking to you. Speak. Or ruin it. Well. Say it again, but sound less excited about being a part of the show. All right, you lose, dude. You suck at life. You suck at life. Just know that. <laughs> Fucking mush mouth. <laughs> oh, he sucks at life, that guy right there. What happened in Vegas? Oh, we went to the Dane Cook show, and oh, Jim was, uh, he fucked up. Never mind. It's a dumb story. Nothing came out of it. We didn't get a backstage pass. He's fucking choked on his own tongue. Because he's a fucking moron. Interrupted the show, Dane stopped, pointed him out, and he just fucking ate his own lips and stared down at his fucking the seat. <laughs> you moron. <laughs> One 
once again. <clears throat> what can we do right at the beginning of the relationship to fucking crack everything open, get to the good stuff? Well, you gotta look for shit. You gotta, it, right now, it's, it is legal to snoop and look for shit, okay? That's not weird anymore. I think that that should be the rule. Even if it's a first date, if somebody leaves the room and their computer's open and on, get on there. Just start. <laughs> Doesn't matter. If they walk in the room, you, you're on my computer? Yeah, I want to know who the fuck you really are. I don't have time to waste. Life is short. Who the fuck? You're a sociopath? I want to know what's going on. <laughs> Anybody who thinks they're being smart here, by the way, I'm going to point something out. Nobody's browser history should be clear. <laughs> you go on somebody's computer and their browser history is clear, get the fuck out now. Everybody should have time to be clearing browsers. You go in a girl browser, she'd be like, Pinterest, 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 WebMD, Pinterest, 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 Pinterest. Guy browser, clear. We're, we're such sneaky shit bums. Every time we leave the house, we go, oh babe, I forgot my keys. We didn't forget the keys, we forgot to clear the browser. That's how paranoid we are. <laughs> so many things are on the phone, too. That's the thing, is everybody's got stuff hidden in the phone. You gotta get in that phone. You gotta get into somebody's phone, because that's where they're hiding their true self, right in there. And there's a couple of ways that you gotta do it. Number one, first of all, I think that, you know, just to, if we're really gonna completely eviscerate a relationship tonight and do it the right way, this is what we do. Girls, leave here tonight and turn to your guy when you get home and just, just say, baby, can I use your phone? Can I have your phone for a second? Yeah, trip us the fuck out, because you never do that. Baby, let me see your phone, let me hold it. I want to walk around with it for a second. Let me see your phone. <laughs> yeah, watch our demeanor change right away. No, baby, I'm, I'm fucking beat. I'm tired, I'm going to bed. What are you talking about, holding phones? Hold your own fucking phone. No, baby, can I see your phone for a second? I want to play that, uh, that game Skiddly-Doo. Let me play it, it's on your phone. Baby, no, you can fucking down, you download it on your phone. I don't have a beta version. You, it's for everybody. Go buy it yourself. It's fucking, it's a buck. What are you, cheap? Spend a buck? You don't use my phone. Well, I, let me see your phone, because I want to look at the Y pictures. I know you have some on there. And I want to relive those nice memories. Can I please see the phone right now? Right now, please? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> fucking... Okay, first of all, baby, I got like a migraine in my foot. I don't even know what that is, but it's killing me. And I need to lie down. I need ibuprofen. We'll fix your dumb foot later. Let me see the phone. Okay, you know what we'll do? This is what we'll do. I'm gonna book a trip to Hawaii for us tomorrow, and we're gonna go back. We're gonna make new memories, better memories. Take better pictures. <laughs> we do not want to hand you the phone. We don't want to, not only that, you know how many guys in here are so terrified that I'm even saying this? They will go to the bathroom at some point in time and be like, how the fuck do I mass delete this whole thing? Hey, buddy, come here. What's the button? What's the start this shit over button? System factory, whatever that is. Fucking Dane. What do I do? Saying, Dane, I have access to the phone, but I can't get in, Dane, because there is a very intricate uh, code device, Dane. Password protected. And I can't get past it, Dane, because I'm not a hacker. I'm going to help you tonight to be a hacker. <laughs> you want to get into that phone? Follow me. <laughs> All right, I know, there's a the little four digit. And, okay, and on the new phone, I guess there's like a fingerprint, which is, that's not too scary. Right, girls, you go to sleep, your hand's hanging over the bed. <laughs> We walk out. <laughs> but most phones, you still have the... So this is what you do. You want to get into the phone? All right, this is what you do. When the person leaves their phone, pick up their phone. And then you just go like this. Get it nice and clean, okay? Get it nice and pristine. Get that glass nice and shiny. Leave it on the table. When they come into the room, go, hey, baby, do me a favor. Uh, check that movie app. Let's go see a cinematic adventure later, you and me. Yeah. When they pick it up, they finally go, okay, um, it's playing at 8.30 at the Cinemaplex. Let's go.
they finally put the phone down, all you have to do, you want to get in that phone, when they finally leave the room, pick it up, just like this. see it, four little smudges, a little boogie swipe right down the bottom. It's such a great feeling too, they go into the shower and then you know it's just one of a few different, so you're just waiting for that click. Mm. Nothing. It's like you just hacked the government, it's the greatest like you just launched a missile out of NORAD. That's how you fucking feel accomplished. You are a hacker. <laughs> you're in. But then, you, you listen, once you're in, you relax, because then your heart starts racing, you start thinking, like, you're going to find shit immediately. So you got to really just cool out, go zen, because if you start, you know, in panic, everything you see is going to start, you know, you go into her photos, and you're going to be like, she's fucking her little nephew. This is it's hundreds of pictures of them at the park. That's where they rendezvous. Just gonna, gonna cool out. <laughs> Take it easy. There's a few things you gotta, you know, you check the voicemail. That's what happened to me. You're saying, Dean, how do you know these things? It happened to me. Personal experience. I was seeing this girl, I was getting a weird vibe, right? We were dating for a little bit. And I was like, I don't know. This girl, sometimes she would say little things to me like, you know, like she fucking hated me. And it was like, <laughs> I don't know, I gotta look for some... I gotta go, go into sleuth mode and find some... So I did it, got into the phone, <sighs> I did it. And then, I'll never forget that moment. It was actually a voicemail, with her it was a voicemail. I actually listened to a voicemail and I heard a guy leaving her a message and it was so bizarre. It was like, first of all, he was British, so it was that voice talking to my girl the way I should be doing it. He was like, oh, my lovely crumpet-faced little woman, I just... Last night was scrumdiddly umptious, and I do, ho I do hope that we, and I do hope that, and I do, do, indeedly do hope. I heard this. I couldn't believe it. At first I knew, so I was kind of like, I knew it, and then a, a few feelings came over. The first, I remember the first thing, once I heard that voice, he immediately made me hate Europe. I just fucking hated it, instantly, all of it. And I was so, then I was hurt, and then I was angry. Out of anger, I, I did this. I deleted all her apps. <laughs> yeah, I was very upset. Yeah, made them all wiggle and just started deleting them. One other, yeah, Candy Crush, she was 270 levels in. Delete, data, delete. Start over, crush new candy. <laughs> and then I moved all her icons around and I put them in places that were not aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Yeah, yeah, like the little phone icon, so it's always in the lower left-hand corner. Uh, -uh. I put that shit eight swipes in. <laughs> Did a swipe eight times. I put that shit on Echo Base. <laughs> she was like, baby, where's my phone icon? I was like, maybe it's in fucking Europe. Why don't you start there? Check that out. <laughs> it's over, right? Truth is revealed, and then you gotta... Splitsville. God, don't you wish that you could just break up the way you, you met? You know that whole thing of like when you meet and it's like love at first sight? It's the best feeling, love at first sight, because you both share the moment. You know in the moment that you both want it. You're, you know, it doesn't matter. You talk about it in the relationship. Oh, do you remember we were both at that party and then I looked over and he saw me and we just both <laughs> felt it. And it's just, you know, it's in that moment. You just wish that relationships could end the exact same way that you just knew at the exact same time. That'd be great, you could just be walking hand in hand down the street and then you just both stop. <laughs> this was really great, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm felt it too, all right, later. No, it never happens like that. One person falls out and the other person doesn't know that they're hated for two, two more years, it's like, why did you stay with me? You know, because oh, you didn't want to pay me back the two hundred dollars you owe me, so you just stayed with me and sussed out other potential exit strategy options. Is that the worst when somebody stays with you and just finds somebody else and they're like, "Hey, got a fucking split on this other person"? 
They're waiting in the car. I gotta go. Why? Oh, They're the getaway driver? Oh. <laughs> Girls, you have a bad breakup. When you have a very bad breakup, you do something that is really interesting. Like when, when a girl has like a real betrayal, when a guy really just crushes you, just smashes your heart, and you know that it, true betrayal you know, because some of you think you've been betrayed, you'd be like, I was betrayed, Dane. I, he used my Netflix account and didn't tell me and racked up $70 in charges. That's not fucking betrayal. Real betrayal, you know, is when somebody you're dating has like a meth lab in your basement and didn't tell you. Yeah, didn't even share the profits with you. A real shit bum kind of person. So you get smashed, and then girls, you do this. You, ch you change your Facebook picture to the happiest picture. But it's obvious that you're very sad because the picture is too happy, right? Your new picture is like you with an umbrella on a sunny day. It's you with five pugs and a cotton candy. Look at me all happy. <laughs> pugs. It's kind of funny how you do that once in a while. You, you like check up on your ex by looking at their whatever the new picture is that they put up. That's the. It used to be back in the day. You just like uh, drive by their house. Remember that was like the thing you do. Middle of the night, you're like, I'm just gonna you just drive by their place. It just felt right. I'm just gonna drive by and just I gotta look at the place where they reside. I need to look at it. I need to. And then a light comes on. I I know that light. I know that light. It's a hallway light. Okay, my work is done here. And then you just drive home. That's. But the modern version of that, now you drive by their Facebook page. <laughs> right? Now you drive by and you look at the whatever. I did this. That girl, right? Spent a year and a half with this person. And then I remember just staring. I just sat at my computer one day. And I went to the Facebook page. And you do this thing, too. When you go there, if there's a brand new picture, you react right away. Oh. oh. oh somebody's moved on with their fucking life. Look at this. <laughs> And you kind of have this moment where you look at this, and you, and you really want to understand who was this person that I spent time with, that I shared, you know, dreams and quests with, right? You're just looking at that picture. You just want to know. So you actually, sometimes you'll actually talk to the picture out loud. You don't even realize you're doing that. You do a little therapy session to picture, right? You're just sitting there staring. I did this, looking at my picture of my ex. I'm like, what the fuck are you smiling at? What beach is that? <laughs> no, look at this bitch wearing a hat. Who told her she could wear hats that bad? And it's a strange thing because you're looking at the picture and let's be honest in here right now. When you go to your ex's page, what you're really feeling is you don't want to see that happy version of your ex. Secretly, deep down inside, when, when, when you get to that page, you're hoping they're going to be sitting in a wheelchair, half crippled. <laughs> They've got Bell's palsy to boot. Their status is, I'm the saddest person in the world. Like. Like, 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 like. <laughs> Girl depression, guy depression, very different. Girl depression, when you're really, really at your lowest point, this is what you do. Girl depression, you sit on your couch, and you put on a big, ugly pair of sweatpants that are like five sizes too big, all right? I'm tying them in like nine knots. And then you sit there, you're sad, and you get a gallon of some delicious ice cream you enjoy. A whole gallon. A gallon, and then you add things that shouldn't even be in there, like chips and a pickle. <laughs> and you sit there, and you don't even use a spoon. You use an ice cream parlor scoop with a trigger on it, so you can just fastball. <laughs> large quantities <laughs> I got a chip you put your hair up in some ugly pineapple looking situation with like a bread clip you look like, you look like a fraggle sitting there <laughs> You put on, then you put on music that makes you even sadder. Like the entire Adele playlist is gone. 
Every song on your shuffle. Oh, bad Girlfriends call you up. This is amazing. Your girls call you up, and you can only respond one way when your girls call. Either they're telling you something wonderful about yourself, or they're telling you something negative about your ex, and you can only respond one way. Whatever they're saying, and they're like, "Girl, we we believe in you, and we think that you're you're amazing, and you're gonna rise above this because you're awesome. Do you know how awesome you are? You're like the super awesome girl in our group. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. And he." He was a total shit bum. We didn't even like him. And he wasn't even attractive. We just said he was. He was ugly. He was so ugly. I know. I know, right? I know. <laughs> Swallowed the whole pickle. <laughs> so all you can say to anything is, I know, or there's only one other statement that you always have to interject in it, right? Your girl's telling you something great, and you're gonna respond with, I know, they're gonna, you're, you're, in a year from now, you're gonna be so psyched, you're gonna be in the best place of your life, and you're gonna look back, and you're gonna be so thankful this happened. <sighs> I know. And pause. <sighs> I just don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand. <laughs> Guy depression, guy depression is pathetic. Because we're big babies. Guy depression is something like this, right? We're in our apartment, we're walking around totally naked. Right, we just, just skulk around nude. And then for some, I don't even know why, we only itch this part of our head. And here's when you know you're really at the doldrums of despair as a guy. You've got one light bulb left that works. <laughs> what do you do? You just take it from the room you're in. <laughs> and we bring it to where we need some illumination. <laughs> and then we make a decision. When this bulb blows, I'm killing myself keeping me alive, bulb. <laughs> and then it gets even sadder. Then we just lay on the dirty floor, totally naked, <laughs> completely flat. We just lay there for hours. <laughs> and what do we do when we're down here? We do little rhythms, little taps. And then after a little while, because we're bored, we just start making up really horrible songs <laughs> about our now ex. We just lay there, we're like, someone's a big fat bitch. I've seen your cellulite, light. I'm laying on the fucking floor for you people. No, no, keep it. I don't want it like that. I just want you to know. Then our buddies call us. When our buddies call, we don't tell them shit. Unlike girls who, it's like, we don't tell them anything. Why? Because then our friends will try to fuck our ex. So we don't tell them. We never tell them. It'll be like months and months later, finally one of your friends will, where's your girl? Oh, she, uh, she was kidnapped off a cruise ship. <laughs> yeah. I, but honestly, I think she's happier now, so it's cool. <laughs> what finally gets you out of the funk and back up into society is very different. The motivation, girls, I think that after a bad breakup, I think that you get into the best shape of your life sometimes after. Yeah, you get in like, you get so motivated that I think that you get in like revenge shape. Let's call it that. 
right? I think that you're so, you just want to get in. So you, you, you take like a volcano yoga class, right? It's like 680 degrees in the room. And, right? They put you on a spin bike in there. You're just fainting and you have a picture taped of him. I'll show you. Just sweating your fake titties off in there. Just... And then just all new, new you, new outfits and new hairstyles, new sexy makeovers from tutorials that you saw online. And you're just this, because I think that you have this dream, this hope that we're going to see you somewhere. And I think that you envision like that we're going to see you and we're going to literally just, we're going to stop and reach out towards you. And just say aloud, like, my God, what have I lost? I had this beautiful enchantress in front of me the whole time. And I'm a shit bum, and I let her just... What motivates us as guys? Here's our motivation right here after a bad breakup. We want to meet and date a girl that is hotter than our ex. That's all we care about. We don't even care if we like her. We will deal with that later. Just got to be hotter than our ex. Because we want to we wanna bump into you the same way you want to bump into us. We want to see you coming out of a movie theater with our new girl so we can be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's going on? Upgrade. What's going on over here? How you doing? Isn't that a great moment when you bump into your ex? It's it like a sour ending and both of you are in a situation together just kind of standing there. I know you got invited to like somebody's wedding or like, ah, uh, and you just both finally have to, sometimes after years, you have to say some shit to each other. Girls, this is again, this is one of those moments that you handle it. Like, this is where you could really just pull out Wolverine fucking shing, just, But you don't. You have this perfect moment to finally let this guy just know all the crap he did and just take responsibility. But you don't. You handle it with such grace and like this empowered moment. And you just, you, and you see it happen. You see, you have the thought of like, you know, you could just, and then you finally go, I just, can I just, can I just say something? I only ever wanted the best for you. That's it. When I first met you, I remember the first thing I thought was, I just want the best for him. And that's what I still believe. I just want the best for you. And whatever you do, that's it. The best. And we wish that we could have that same ability because we're in our head thinking of, re of our response, which is usually something like we want to say, well, I hope that you fail at what you love. I hope you have a baby, and that baby grows up to murder you <laughs> on my behalf, for whatever reason. You are a batch of bitches. I meant it when I texted, but I mean it now. Seven bitches in a bundle. So I guess like one of the things that you can do right on the right on the very start, like who's a couple? You guys a couple over here? You guys together? Who's together? Yeah? How long have you two been about to break up? <laughs> How long? Two ooh, two years. Pivotal, pivotal point right there. Two years is really it's amazing how a year and a half to two and a half, so much a year and a half in you're together. And maybe you're in like a little bit of a car accident and both your heads kind of go forward and, you know, you'd, and then guys would turn and go, baby, you okay, baby? Are you all right? Are you all right? Right? Two and a half years, that same thing. <laughs> baby, what the fuck did you do? Was that you? Was that us? What the fuck was that, babe? What did you do to us? So how do you how do you make the relationship from the very beginning? How can you make it uh, exciting right off the bat? Well, you I, I would say this: you got to watch you got to watch porn together. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is this is good stuff. You got to talk about those weird little fetish things, and then you got to experience them together. And that that way, you'll be true equals, right? Because then once you both know how deviant the other one is, like I'm fucked up, you're fucked up. Yeah, we both have some success, but you're a fucking weirdo, but so am I. So we're in this together. <laughs>
There's a healthy way to watch porn, and there's an unhealthy way to watch porn. Okay, here it is right here. You want a healthy way? This is what you do. You sit down together. You make an experience together. You sit in bed. You get a computer. Open it up, and then you share. The, it's kind of like this titillating, exciting. You know, you go, all right, okay, baby, let's, uh, all right, that's the site. Uh, you, all right, you cl click on one. Find one. All right, you want me to? Uh, I'll click on it. All right, let's click on it together. Ready? One, two, three, click on that. Ah! Right? It's exciting. It's couple of them right there. That's it. You know, and you, whatever. Just go to the categories. You pick something. To, by the way, has anybody looked at the categories recently? They, they've added a lot of shit. Categories used to be just a few things. It was like Asian, anal, threesome. You go there now, it's like coffin raiders, forest fires, midget versus mongoose. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> but you experience it it together and that makes this bond even th there's there's a great moment too because it is you know you're a couple not everything you're going to agree on sometimes like there's that moment you're like all right baby oh this one oh, is kind of good baby that's kind of sexy right your girl has to look here for a second mm, i don't like that lamp <laughs> it's weird why have they put that in there it looks like the lamp in my nana's house i can't watch that <laughs> they go all right baby you you, uh, you pick one that's scary that's always scary. You hand over the reins to your girl. Baby, pick one, right? And there's a, that moment where it's like, oh, this I can find out some real, right? And your girl finds, oh, yeah, okay. She picks a random one. You watch for a second. There is no greater. Mo this is the woman that you might want to marry if this ever happens. If you hear this come come out of your your girl's mouth, right? And you're watching a porn together. And you take a second and you watch one that she discovered. And then if she goes like this, mm, his dick's too big. Thank you. Bye bye, big dick. <laughs> That's the healthy way to watch porn. Unhealthy way? Real simple. If you are fucking and watching porn, you have this person with you and you're watching, right? You look at each other once in a while just to make sure the other person's still there. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that because I'm always afraid that the people in the porn are going to turn and start watching me as well. And they reach towards me. We hold hands through the screen. It's like the ring. All of a sudden, whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody has one embarrassing sexual experience in your life that you wish that you could just delete from your brain forever. That one thing that you, you just say, why did that have to happen? I wish I could just, in a day, I don't know what, girls, maybe one night you were a little bit drunk and you went to g give your guy a head and then you went too deep, puked on a dick. That would be an example. <laughs> maybe I just threw up all of your cock. Yeah, I know, honey, I'm right here. Louder. Example, i.e. For me, I know in mine, I know that when I am 90 years old, I'm going to look back on my life and this will be in my top 10 cringeworthy moments that I wish that I could just delete from my cerebellum completely. <laughs> about a year ago, this happened a year ago. Mine is about a year ago. I was out with some friends. I meet this girl right away. An incredible uh, energy. You love that. You see somebody, there's a sexual chemistry. You have a, you know, a fondness for each other, you know, an, an affinity. Uh, a simpatico, if I may. A sexual simpatico. I think that was a Phil Collins album that I enjoyed. And you know that things are going to go down if you just, you know, keep it cool, and that's great. It's an exciting experience. Now, a couple things before I explain what happened. I want to categorize this because it really isn't an embarrassing sex story. We're going to call this, let's call this an embarrassing post-sex conversation. I just want to be really clear. Yeah, it's not about what happened during sex. It's the talk that I had after. I wish I could just forget about the post-sex conversation. Now, a couple things that you need to know about the girl, just, you know, before we get there. Um, she was pretty young. And, um, yeah, and she was very young. 